uh, very good evening to you all uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ <clears throat> uh, by lord's grace uh, uh, we are going to continue our uh, basic class so last week we studied about the gospel so uh, can anybody tell me what is the gospel anybody anil brother smita sister anu sister munna sister joel brother kamal uh, brother what's the meaning of gospel in the bible gospel is not about only new testament but uh, it's about entire old testament very good okay then to whom was the gospel first preached abraham abraham very good brother very good very good sister good so what did god preach to abraham what did god tell to abraham from thy seed all nation to be blessed very good sister so that's the gospel so in abraham seed in christ the whole world shall be blessed say god took a oath upon himself it could promise upon himself you see will god ever tell a lie no no, no brother no he will not even joke also so just imagine if god has made a oath upon himself then how can we claim how can the whole world claim that only few christians will be saved and the rest of the people will be tortured in hell that is not the gospel at all the gospel means through christ each and every man can will be saved they shall understand and accept christ what does the bible say every tongue shall confess and every to knee shall bow that jesus is the lord of lords the king of kings and that is sure to happen the word of god will definitely be fulfilled very good anyway good excellent thank you Uh, good that you are all understanding the word of god very nicely uh, with the help of uh, the gopal's uh, nepali uh, you see uh, translation also so good <clears throat> so today we are going to study a very very important topic today see and this topic uh, is about the faith you see so only those uh, who have faith on the bible will really be edified uh, by the subject so today i request everybody to just uh, go through each and every verse which i tell from the bible and kindly open the bible and understand because uh, this is a very important uh, you see matter and uh, this is regarding our salvation so faith so what is the meaning of faith uh, in the bible if you see the whole world has uh, different types of faith the muslims have a faith you see they have a faith that they should uh, Uh, offer a prayers uh, to their god uh, at least two times a day without fail and uh, even uh, you see the hindus have faith that uh, in a cow you see there are uh, you see crores and crores of uh, uh, their gods uh, and they believe that uh, you see the cow's uh, urine is very holy and uh, by sprinkling it uh, all over their house it gives a you see sanctifications effect and if a man drinks it he will be cleansed of the fall you see his sins so that is their faith though it might not be acceptable to us yet that is the faith their faith therefore you see dear brethren even the christians also have faith and their faith is on the bible see none of us have seen god none of us have seen jesus christ but yet we have faith at a Jesus is our Lord and the Savior, and this faith in the Bible is called as the most holy faith. So kindly read Book of Jude, verse twenty. Book of Jude, verse twenty. Can somebody read, brother? Any brothers or sisters? Yes. Read Daniel, brother. Sunita, sister, you can read. But yeah, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. praying in the holy ghost very good so build up yourself in the most holy faith praying in the holy ghost build up yourself in the most holy faith so here 
You see, Apostle Jude tells that you should be established in the most holy faith. So, if the faith on the Bible is called as the most holy faith, then what is the definition of the faith in the Bible? That is given to us in Hebrews 11.1 1, that uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Like for example, the creation of this universe. We never seen who created it, you see. We never uh, have proof of it also. But yet uh, we believe and we have faith that these things are, uh, you see, being uh, <clears throat> Uh, created by God. So this is faith. So believing on the things which we are, don't see, which we cannot see, is called as faith in the Bible. Okay. That's what uh, Hebrews 11.3 also says. So in this faith, if you see, there are actually three types of faith. One is a day-to-day -day faith, you see, and the second uh, is a, you see, saving faith. So, the first uh, type of faith is a day-to-day -day faith. So, day-to-day -day faith means uh, in day-to-day -day activities, you see, so God shall, uh, you see, protect us and God shall uh, save us and God shall overrule everything for us. You see, this is, uh, you see, the day-to-day -day faith. So, this one, everybody has, every human being, you see, has this faith. Like, for example, you see, even uh, a very poor man, who does a small business, like for example, take it uh, selling uh, peanuts on the roadside or selling some old, uh, you see, papers uh, and books on the roadside. Imagine today the expenses are so high that even after working hard and, urging, and earning a good salary, it's difficult to maintain the family. But yet they have the faith that even by selling peanuts, making a small margin, they can sustain the life. That is the faith on their God. So this is called as a day-to-day -day faith. And the next faith is saving faith. So what is the meaning of saving faith? After we die, <clears throat> God will save us. See, every religion believes this one. Every religion, you take any religion in this world, though it be Hindus, Muslim, Christians, uh, uh, Buddhist, Jains, uh, everybody believe that after death they will go to heaven. So everybody goes to heaven means who will go to hell? That's a big question. We will going to see all these things in the coming days. Sir. But every beggar, you so you even go and ask for a beggar. Uh, you ask him after death where you will go. You will tell I will go to heaven. You see, you go and ask for a thief or a murderer. You will tell oh, I will go to heaven after my death. Dear brother, this is their faith. That after death, uh, God will save us. So the third type of faith is the doctrinal faith. The faith which is based on the doctrines is called as a doctrinal faith. So today, in Christianity, we have more than 750 denominations in Christianity. You see, Catholic, Protestants, uh, you see, Pentecostal, in Pentecostal, Ceylon Pentecostal, various types of Pentecostal. You see the Presbyterian, Baptist, Jehovah Witness, Wungli Jesus, Trinitarians, you see, uh, Episcopal, Evangelical. So various types of denominations are there. Among all these denominations, which is correct? You see, the Roman Catholics also have faith. You see, they have faith by doing some relics, by doing some rituals, doing some orthodox things. They believe that uh, they will be saved, like uh, doing rosary or offering incense, you see, and taking the bread and wine every now and then, every day. They believe that that is their faith, uh, you see. So, what does the Bible say? Which is the truth? Among all this faith, which is the truth? Jesus said that this is the truth. You know, what is it one? Thy word is truth. Read John 17, 17. Uh, Anu Magar, can you read? John 17, 17. Anu Magar, sister, can you read? Sing. <clears throat> sister, John 17, 17, sister. <clears throat> 
sanctify them through the thy truth. Thy word is truth. Very good. Thy word is truth. Thy word. God's words is the truth. So if you see among all this denomination, which is the truth, the Bible is the truth. So Bible is the trust stone. See, whenever we hear something, rather than just uh, believing it blindly, we need to verify from the scriptures if it is so or not. If it is true or not. Therefore, Jesus said, you said, you see, huh? what did Jesus say? Huh? You shall know the truth and truth shall make you free. You see, John 8.32. So, this truth, this word of God, how did God give? Did God give it uh, in just a single day? Did uh, God uh, see uh, give this uh, book directly from heaven? No. You see, God used more than 40 authors for a period of more than nearly 4,000 years to write this holy Bible and gave it to us. So let us read Hebrews 1st chapter verses 1 and 2. Hebrews 1st chapter verses 1 and 2. Joel brother, can you read? God who at sundry times and divorce manner spake in time pass unto the father by the prophet hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed her here of all things by whom also he made the worlds very good brother see god who at sundry times that means who at different different times and in different different ways has spoken to the fathers and the prophets is himself. How did God speak and write the, the Bible through the prophets and God's children? It is not at a single time. It is not in a single way. Dear brethren, God spoke through prayers, through situations, you see, through visions, through dreams, you see, various things God has spoken through his prophets, dear brethren. So, among all these things only, through all these mediums only, God has given the Bible. He even spoke to the tabernacle. You see, he even spoke to the dreams which he gave to God's children, dear brethren. So, how did this truth come at last? What does the verse say in Hebrews 1.1? Uh, 1, 1, Who at uh, sundry times spoke in different manner in the last days, that means at the last Last of all, he has spoken through his son. So through Jesus Christ, God has spoken this truth, this word of God to Hazrat Simsa. You see, therefore, you know, Jesus said that, you know, clearly in John 1.17 that the law was given by Moses. You see, God gave the law through Moses. But what did uh, Jesus uh, give? Jesus gave the truth. That doesn't mean that there was no truth before Jesus Christ. There was truth, but all the things which were hidden in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ brought it to complete truth. You see, we have got a lot of examples in the Bible, like for example, Daniel, who spoke so many visions, prophecies in the book of Daniel. At last, in the Daniel 12 chapter, he says, Lord, I understood nothing. He questions the Lord. Lord, please tell me what is the meaning of all these things which uh, you told me to write uh, and reveal. But uh, God did not uh, allow him to understand those things. So let us read Daniel 12 chapter verse 8 and 9, brother. Daniel 12 chapter verse 8 and 9. Muna, sister, can you read? And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I... O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of end. Mm, you see, I heard, but I understood not. You see, I heard, but I understood not. God, you have told me to write, I have written, but I understood none of these things. What is the meaning of these things? What did God say? It is sealed till the time of the end. These truths 
Jesus came and revealed everything. You know? Huh? Therefore, Jesus spoke in parables. You know? Many, you see, things Jesus spoke in parables and disciples came and questioned him. Lord, why are you speaking in parables? Why are you speaking in deep and dark sayings? Why don't you speak clearly, openly? You know, what is the reply what Jesus gave? Read Matthew 13 chapter verse 10 and 11. Matthew 13 chapter verse 10 and 11. Uh, Romister, can you read? Okay, brother. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou in, unto them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it is given unto you to know that the mystery of the kingdom of the heaven, but to them it is not given. Amen. Mm. See, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, it was completely kept secret. Jesus opened it. Jesus taught this truth to his disciples. What did Jesus say? It is given unto you, not to everybody. Not to everybody. You see, not to all the people of Israel. No. It is only to you because you have that interest and curiosity to know about God's truth and God's plan. Therefore, you see, this truth, how did it come? You see, God spoke through various prophets, various God's children in different, different ways. Ultimately, through Jesus, he spoke. And from Jesus, it was passed on to his disciples. Jesus said that to his apostles. He said, unto you, the apostles is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And you know, what authority or how much authority did God give the apostles? You see, they were given full, complete authority regarding the truth. Regarding the doctrines of the Bible. Read Matthew 18, 18. Uh, Roshan, brother, can you read? Matthew 18, 18. Roshan, brother, you're there. Can you read? Roshan and Kamal. Okay. Okay, somebody else can read. Anybody who can read? I will. Okay, sir, please. Verily I say unto you, words over ye shall be on earth shall be bound in heaven, and words over ye shall lose on earth shall be lose in heaven. Mm. So this was the authority that was given to the disciples. That the apostles, if they bound something on earth, it was like binding in heaven. You see? Now, what is this one? Uh, this binding? We also told, whatever you lose on earth, uh, it is like uh, losing in heaven. So, what is the meaning of this one? Binding and losing. What is the meaning? Uh? What is it trying to tell? Did Jesus say that uh, you should bind all your treasures here? You should all keep your uh, wealth and all nicely bind up? Huh? What is Jesus spelling about this uh, uh, worldly things? Read next verse, sister. Continue. 19. Hmm. Verse 19. Next verse. Sister, you can read verse 19. Oh, okay, you can open the Bible and read. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Ah, so, this was not regarding any earthly things. It was upon agreeing something on earth. That means, if all the apostles agreed something on earth, regarding some doctrines, regarding some truth, regarding something in the Bible, it was like God approving their teachings. So here, the binding and losing is regarding the doctrines 
and not about the worldly things. Okay. Now let us see an example about, uh, you see, uh, binding, like, uh, you see, putting restrictions uh, in the church. You see, letting loose means giving liberty in the church. You see, there is a lot of uh, liberty, lot of restrictions in the church. Correct, no? Huh? Isn't it? See, can we do anything in the church? Can we do anything in the gathering? Is there a discipline or not? Tell me. Yes. Yes. We can't do anything in the school. You see, you see when everybody puts a shoes and come, uh, I can't tell to the teacher, no, I won't wear shoes. I will uh, put the shoes on my head and come. You see, nobody will agree that one. There is a discipline. There is a decorum. That is what Jesus is saying. See, when I go, you begin to establish the churches all over the world. If you all agree upon a certain point, a certain doctrine, that it should be like this, it is like God approving the doctrine. Like for example, you see, let me ask you a question. Can sisters preach in the church? So what's your opinion? Can sisters preach in the church, brother? Brothers and sisters? Your majority are sisters only. Now sisters tell me, please. Sunita sister, Anu sister, Munna sister, Romi sister, uh, Kamal sister. Everybody tell me. Can sisters preach in the church? Yes or no? Only few nowadays. Only few nowadays. Good sister. Good sister. Okay. Thank you. Sunita sister, what about you? What's your view? Oh, Sunita sister, you're there? Anu sister. Munna sister, tell me. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe or maybe not. Okay. Good. Then uh, Kamal, Roshan, Kamal. Okay. Joel brother, what's your opinion? Can sisters preach or not? Uh, no, not. Uh, not. So, okay. So, why so much of difficulty? Huh? Correct now. So, let us see what does the Bible say. Correct now. See, whenever we have a question, we need to search the answers from the Bible. Correct now. For the Bible, which is the dictionary? Bible itself. Very good stuff. For the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. Any question we get, you see, we need to search immediately the Bible. Okay? Not search the Google. Huh? So, Google sometimes will give false information also. Okay? So, now, let us search the Bible and see what is the answer for this one. You see? Read 1 Corinthians 14 chapter 34 uh, to 37. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 chapter Sorry, 1 Corinthians 14 chapter 34 to 37. Muna sister, can you read 1 Corinthians 14 chapter uh, 34 to 37, sister, please. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience. Hey, yeah. What, sister? Sister, read it correctly, sister. What are you selling? Sister should not? Uh? Not speak. Oh, yeah, that means they should scream loudly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, not speak. Okay. So slowly they won't speak. But loudly they can speak, no? No. No. Uh, you read correctly, please. I am very old man. Not able to listen properly. Read that verse again. Let me see loudly. Let your woman keep silence in the church. Oh, oh. In the church. Let the woman keep silence. Silence. Just uh, see, dear brethren, if woman is not permitted to even speak in the church, is it proper to preach? Now continue, sir. Ah. But they are commanded to be under obedience. As also saith the law. Ah, and if... As also saith the law. 
that means what apostle paul was telling here was not something new it was already written in the law therefore if you see in the law in the old testament none of the women were permitted to preach in the temple were somebody were permitted you see any of the women were permitted to preach in the temple no none of the women were permitted to preach in the temple you see you see they spoke god's words but preaching was different they witnessed about god naman's servant she witnessed about god you see rahel eh huh? leha rebecca they all witnessed about god that doesn't mean that they preached the word of god there is lot of witness difference between witnessing you see ha huh? so many sisters do witnessing activity that is that of difference than leading the church and preaching the brother we need to make a difference clearly therefore in the uh, days of apostle paul and all there were lot of uh, sisters and even during the days of jesus also there were lot of sisters who were supporting jesus christ in his uh, spiritual activity you see dear brethren so this uh, uh, verse clearly says that, that uh, women should not speak uh, they are coming to to be silent uh, uh, in uh, the church okay continue sir next continue please continue sir uh. and if they will learn anything let them ask their husbands at home for it is it is the same for women to speak in the church very good sir see what does he say uh, if she has got anything to ask she can definitely go and ask uh, you see the husband in the church okay so he says it is a shame for a woman to speak in a church that means women can't sing eh yeah? women can't uh, pray you see they can you see sing songs uh, you see but uh, they are not permitted to preach they are not permitted to lead a church uh, okay but some people will claim you see that all these things are old brother theory these are old brother those days and all there used to be lot of discrimination between male and female man no men so men were very suppressed that's the reason apostle paul wrote no 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 bible is never outdated you see who is the word of god who is called as the word of god in the bible tell me whose name is the word in the bible jesus very good sir now can we ever tell that jesus is outdated bible says jesus is the same yesterday jesus is the same today even tomorrow he will remain the same the word of god never changes what did apostle paul and what did jesus say you see in revelation what did jesus say if any man adds anything if any man subtracts anything i will you see play game uh, dear brethren we are not supposed to add anything therefore if the apostle paul bound this one as a discipline in the church it uh, is equivalent to god putting a commandment that this has to be implemented in the church now continue sir please continue ha huh? what came the word of god out from you or came it unto you only ah. if any see some people tell no oh, no word of god has come separately to me god has spoken to me he spoke to me sister sister rebecca i am no you are there in the crowd god is calling you god has specially chosen you for his service come come on the stage you should preach the word of god huh? if somebody tells like that what does apostle paul say what the word of god came separately to you specially to you ha huh? ha huh? isn't it the same holy spirit if the holy spirit has spoken the same thing many thousands of years before do you think the holy spirit will change the doctrine now no do you think the holy spirit will change the doctrine in the future no it is the same holy spirit and the teachings will be the remain the same they won't be any changes because our god never changes continue sir ha huh? if any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that i write unto you are the commandments of the lord ah if anybody tells no i am anointed with the holy spirit god has separately spoken to me that these things to be done means what does apostle paul say if you think you are a spiritually anointed man 
first this basic thing the simple thing has to be implemented in all the churches which is very very small little thing if you can't implement this small little thing in a church that means it is a clear sign that you don't have the holy spirit this is not the holy spirit's work at all what does it say if any man thinks to be a prophet or a spiritual if you are anointed with the spirit first acknowledge this thing that it is not apostle paul's teaching this is the commandment of the lord god himself has written this one this has to be you see this is the same thing mentioned in the law therefore in the tabernacle how many uh, priest women huh? you see worked how many levi women worked only men female assisted them not inside the tabernacle no no no, no. outside a lot of other activities are there for the sisters to do the brethren preaching is the last thing and that has to be that is reserved totally you see for the brothers read verse 33 read verses 33 sister same chapter verse 33 for god is not author of confusion but of peace as in all churches of the saints see as in all churches not only few churches not only in our church if it is god's church it will be implemented because god is not a god of a confusion no why she should not preach correct no read first timothy second chapter 11 to 14 first timothy second chapter 11 to 14 uh who can see sunita sister can you read sunita sister you are there can you read first timothy second chapter 11 to 14 let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but i suffer not a woman to teach nor to <laughs> usurp. usurp authority over the men but to be in silence ah. For... sister what does he say she should not speak means what? Not even open the mouth for singing songs in the uh, in the church. Uh, when everybody is singing in the choir, she has definitely got the opportunity to speak. But what does the Bible say? Not to speak means not allowed to teach. Change. Not allowed to, you see, exercise authority over the man as a leader, as a pastor. You see, Huh? She is not permitted to lead a church. This is the meaning uh, to remain silent. Uh. You see, if she is given an opportunity to pray, you see, huh? she can sing songs with everybody. If the, uh, if the opportunity is given to read the Bible, of course, we can do all these things. Uh, but there are a lot of discipline. Uh, even these things has to be implemented. Why? Why, now? Why does God the, not allow women to preach? Continue, sir. So where you stopped, continue. Hmm. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Ah, because who was deceived? Eh? Satan, whom did he deceive first? Uh, did he deceive Adam? Uh? Adam knew very well that I'm going to die. But uh, he deceived Eve. So, woman is a weaker vessel easily she can be entrapped by the devil. Therefore, God avoided them to speak in the churches. Therefore, you see and observe the Satan's tool he has used in all the religions. Maximum he is used. You see? Huh? Women. You see all that gods and all? Who are there? Are male? No male. Only female are there. You see? Why? That is the tool of the devil. So, the sisters has to be very careful. So, brother, then uh, the sister, she doesn't have any other work in the church? No. She's got a lot of opportunities. Lot of things are there, dear brethren. You see, huh? she can help and assist her brethren. You see, maintain cleanliness in the church. You see, sing songs. Huh? You see, read the Bible. So, encourage the brethren, encourage the children. To nurture them in Christ and even she can make her calling and election sure as equal to a brother. 
regarding heavenly salvation there is no differentiation at all she will also get the same reward as a brother will get ta but only thing that she has to be under subjection you see read galatians 3 28 galatians 3 28 uh anu sister can you read anu sister you are there can you read galatians 3 28 there is neither jew or jew not greek there is neither born nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in christ jesus okay. there is no differentiation color creed caste ha huh? you see nation ha huh? community no not even gender everybody are equal in heavenly salvation to brethren but regarding the discipline in the church if apostle paul has bound it is like god bounding so this is the meaning of binding uh, putting restrictions uh, strong restrictions in the church uh, you see now let us see the example of losing that means there are some liberties in christianity isn't it yes there are liberties like for example ha huh? ha huh? like uh, can we call huh, somebody as father can we call anybody as father like uh, a pastor can we call a pastor or a brother as a father can we call them no no why read matthew 23 9 and 8 matthew 23rd chapter verse 9 first then verse 8 can you read from the bible uh, i think and, hmm. and call no man your father upon the earth for one is a father which is in heaven neither be ye called master for one is your master even christ see huh? so we should not call nobody as father except our earthly father mm-hmm. we should not go and call anybody as father imagine see i also take classes i also Uh, preach uh, word of god if anybody what if everybody comes and calls me as father is it correct is it a right term to call me as a father you see my wife will she will feel bad da see that's not a proper uh, thing to call anybody as father why though we may teach though we may preach we are all equal in god's sight we are all supposed to be called as brothers and sisters read verse 8 brother now but be not ye called rab rabbi for one is your master even christ and all ye are brethren all you are brethren underline it we are all brothers and sisters we are all equal though we may be you see many years in the truth though you all may be just few months in the truth you are all equal no partiality nothing so this is the meaning of binding okay let us see one more example okay can we call somebody as reverend you know some so many people have the titles now reverend reverend holy father huh? reverend so and so huh? can we call somebody as reverend okay let us see from the bible Psalms and eleven verse nine. Psalms and eleven verse nine. Uh, Romi sister, can you read? Romi sister, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Psalms and eleven verse nine. Nine. One. Um, he sent. He sent. a redemption unto his people he hath commanded his covenant for ever holy and uh, reverent is his name holy and reverent is whose name god's name so that's the title of our almighty god can we imagine that man can ever be equal to god you see 
first of all man was created much lower than the angels and that was speaking about a perfect man but we are fallen man you see dear brethren then how can we be equal to god how can we ever think of being equal to god this is the same spirit of the devil what did he say in isaiah 14 chapter i will sit on the congregation of the north i will be like the most high this is not what the bible tells the brother none of the brothers or sisters should have title next to their name whatever work we do that is our sacrifice to the lord it is not title not even the word pastor should be next to us dear brother we are all equal see nowadays the lot of titles huh? prefix you call it as prefix in the you see uh, what do you say legal terms you see like for example doctor you see doctor prasad you see doctor means they put dr in study and put the name you see professor captain general sergeant honorable chief justice detective no in all this uh, prefix uh, there is nobody who's put a reverend or pastor and all these things are implemented by some christians we will see later all this when all these things came but why this prefix is put you know whenever we book a plane ticket or a train ticket we usually have a waiting list and in that waiting list when the list is finalized usually they give a preference for a doctor or a colonel or a military person or a chief justice in that waiting list why because such a big train such a big plane carrying uh, more than hundreds and thousands of people if something happens it is very easy to identify a doctor it will be very easy to identify a police personnel because by him so many lives can be saved that is the reason the put prefix but today this has become a fashion this is not what bible says and none is greater than our lord our lord never put any title or prefix before his name dear brother okay now pope papa pope is there now you know what is the meaning of pope in latin pope is a latin word in latin it means papa can we call a single person as papa in this world dear brother this is against the bible even today pope claims that jesus gave him the two keys you see the two keys to heaven read matthew 16 chapter matthew 16 chapter verses 18 and 19 matthew 16 chapter verses 18 and 19 uh, joel brother can you read matthew 16 18 and 19 and i and i say also unto thee that thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my ch- church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and what whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven see again the same word loose in heaven we see loose on earth bind in heaven bind in earth so here jesus said upon you i will build the church upon peter never the church was built but the rock solid foundation doctrine of peter claiming that jesus is the son of god upon this doctrine the church was built and he was given the authority the keys of kingdom of heaven some people think that this is literal key of hell and heaven no you see the key is generally used to unlock something so the doctrine of peter what he spoke upon this doctrine that jesus is god's son the church stood and the two keys given to him was first the door of opportunity was opened by peter to the jews see two keys were given so one key peter used it to open the door of opportunity to the jewish people on the day of pentecost 
3,000 people got converted. Again, Peter used the same key after three and a half years to open the door of opportunity to the Gentiles. This is the two keys, dear brethren. Okay. Now let us come to uh, example of losing. So whatever you lose on earth, it will be lost in heaven. So what is the meaning of lose? That means liberty. Now, are Christians permitted to marry or not? Can a Christian marry or not? Please tell me. Nobody wants to marry. Okay. Let us read what the Bible says. Hebrews 13.4 Hebrews 13.4 Who can read? Hebrews 13.4 I will I'll read that. Please sit down. Honorable in all and the um, bed undefiled undefiled but um who more what is the word sorry war mongers and uh, adulterers god will judge okay so marriage is honorable in all so marriage is respectable the first marriage in garden of eden was created by god then will god ever forbid and put a rule that you should never marry you see no okay now can a bishop marry or not at least answer me this question Forget about uh, others' marriage. At least, can a bishop marry or not? Yes. He can marry. Uh. Hey, uh. What brother, you are saying like this one? Huh? Bishop can marry. Uh. Let us read in the Bible. First Timothy 3 2, brother. Read Daniel, brother. First Timothy 3 2. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hosp hospitality, apt to teach. Husband of how many wife, brother? One wife. Or, uh, then he can marry, but he should be only one wife, not multiple wife. So <laughs> the Bible doesn't say that bishop should not marry. But today, how many bishops are married? Eh? Today, they put a restriction saying, oh, yo, bishop should never marry. Now, is this the doctrine of Christ? This is the liberty in Christ. You can use it. But speaking against these doctrines, is it the doctrine of Christ? Is it the most holy faith? Huh? Uh, now, read First Timothy 4th chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3. Can somebody read? First Timothy 4th chapter, verse 1, 2, and 3. Muna sister, can you read? Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and hmm. doctrines of devil. Ah, one minister. See, it says Apostle Paul clearly warned that in the later days they shall depart from the most holy faith. Faith, most holy faith. That's what we are reading now. And they'll give heed, ears, attention to doctrines of devil, it seems. Now you tell me, if the doctrine of devil has to be preached, now where should the devil come and preach? You tell me, where should the devil come and preach? Will he, if he preaches in the temple, will the Christians listen? Tell me, if the devil goes and preaches in the temple or in the mosque, will the Christians listen? No. 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 Then where should the devil come and speak? Church. Church. What brother you are telling like this? Devil will come inside the church. Yes, he will not only come, he will come and sit permanently, putting a throne. Keep your hand like this. We will come back again. Read Revelation 2nd chapter verse 12. Revelation 2.12 Can somebody read? Revelation 2.12 
Joel Buddha, can you read? Okay, Gobal Buddha, read, 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 Gobal Buddha. Uh. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right, this thing said uh, he which had the sharp sword with two edges. Continue. Verse 13 also continue, brother, please. I know thy works, and when thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Even where Satan's seat is. Church. Paragamas church. Satan is there, it seems. Put a seat, it seems. So, Satan in other temples and mosques will visit and go, but in the church he will permanently sit there only. That's the reason Apostle Paul warned. In the later days, they will give ear to the doctrines of devil. Now, what is the doctrine of devil? We should know now. Let us read verses 2 and 3. Uh, Munasitar, please continue reading from where you stopped. First Timothy, 4th chapter, verse 2 and 3. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Yeah, which is the first doctrine of the devil, forbidding to marry. Eh? Is it correct? Uh, putting a rules. Oh, it's a suggestion. It's their liberty. If they want to marry, they can marry. If they want to not marry, it's up to them. Why do you compel not to marry? But today, which is the denomination which is forbidding compulsorily not to marry? You tell me. Is that a doctrine of Krishna? Eh? This is the doctrine of the devil. And next thing, abstain from meat, it seems. No, you tell me, Christians don't eat meat which day? Oh, I think in your uh, country, you don't have that one. You see, Orthodox Christians, they don't eat meat on Friday. You know why? Friday, Jesus died on the cross. Oh, holy day, we should not eat. Even during the 40 days Lent period, they won't eat meat. These are all doctrines of the devil. God knew that Satan will definitely manipulate the Bible. He will change the Bible upside down. Therefore, God gave everything in writing. You see, you know what will happen? Huh? If just words pass on, lot of misunderstanding, miscommunication will come. Like for example, you say, one person was going on the road, it seems. And uh, you see, a girl vomited. And the vomit was very black. And uh, she went on passed this message to her friend. Uh, she told, you, I saw a girl vomiting. It was very black. And further, uh, she went and told some other person, and she told, uh, I, I saw a girl vomiting. Uh, uh, you see, it was very black like a crow. And uh, the next girl, as she passed on the message, you know, how did it go? It uh, went on in such a way that uh, she told, you a girl vomited a crow, huh? a black crow on the road. You see, this is the communication gap. God knew, if I don't give everything in writing, Satan will definitely manipulate the Bible. Therefore, God gave everything in writing. Therefore, we should have faith only on the Bible, not on the teachings of men. Jesus knew that the church will get corrupted. Satan will definitely use his all strength to corrupt the church. Jesus told and warned us regarding this one in two of his parables. We'll just finish it off in five minutes by reading these two of the parables. Kindly read Matthew 13, chapter 31 and 32. Matthew 13, chapter 31 and 32. Hmm. Anybody can read? Hmm. Joel, another, please. Another parable put the forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seed, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and become becometh a tree so that the bird of the air come and laws in the branches thereof very good brother see we know this parable 
you see, uh, uh, you see, a man took a seed and sowed it in his field. We know the Son of Man, Jesus, he took the seed. That seed is the doctrine of faith of Christianity. Jesus said, no, uh, we should have faith like a mustard seed. Uh, understand, no? Mustard seed, small faith. That was the faith of Christianity. Went and sowed in the world. What happened? Uh, that mustard seed, it began to grow into a herb, then later became a big tree, it seems. Now you tell me, mustard plant, is it a plant or is it a tree? Mustard seed grows to be a plant or grows to be a plant. tree? Plant. Plant. You see, it never grows to be a tree. That means this is an abnormal growth. The intention of Jesus sowing Christianity in this world was to select a little flock. Few interested Christians, that's all. But today, Christianity has become one of the greatest religions in the world. You know, the world's greatest collection of offerings happens, you see, you know where? Second is India. In Andhra Pradesh, Tirupati. You know, first where it happens? Sir? The first highest collection in this world for offering happens in Vatican City even today. You see, so Jesus never intended uh, the church to grow in such worldly ways. Uh, you see, so what happened? Uh, the birds of the air came and nested in the branches. Uh -huh. You see, the birds of the air means what? Uh, Jesus told in the parable of the sower, no? as it fell on the wayside. You see what happened? The birds of the air came and took the seed. Jesus clearly saw that uh, that. Uh, Birds of the air are the devil. Read Matthew 13, chapter. <clears throat> Matthew 13, chapter, verse 19. Hmm. Can somebody read Matthew 13, 19? <clears throat> Kopal Buddhar or Ashish Buddhar. Ah. Okay. Here you there for the parable of the sower, where Anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that uh, which was sown in his heart. This is, uh, this is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. Uh -huh. See, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. Each and every answer for each and every word should be searched from the Bible. So in the Bible, birds means false doctrines or the devil. So what happened there? Satan came and nested in this mustard tree. What happened? Satan is not there in any temple. He is in all the churches. How? He is in all the churches through false doctrines. Read Revelation 18.2. Revelation 18.2. Revelation 18.2. And he mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitations of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Mm, it has become the habitation of devils. Every foul spirit, not holy spirit, foul spirit, cage of every unclean hateful birds means stop answer. One more parable we'll read. Matthew 13.33 Matthew 13.33 brother Anybody can read? Another parable speak he unto them The kingdom of heaven is like unto Levon which a woman took and hid in their measure of meal till the whole was Living. Mm. See, the kingdom of uh, heaven is like a leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. So, leaven in the Bible is what? Uh, actually, if you add leaven or yeast to any of the food, it actually what happens? Uh, you see, it spoils the food. So, leaven in the Bible means false doctrines. Matthew 16 11, brother. Matthew 16 11. Who can read? Matthew 
Matthew 16:11. I'll go for the read. How is it that you do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Okay. The living of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the false doctrines, the false teachings. So nobody would add false doctrines to the true doctrines. The church had three important doctrines, love, hope and faith. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Can somebody read? 1 Corinthians 13, 13, brother. Can somebody read? 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now I will in faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of the of this is Charity. Uh -huh. You see? Now wait what? Faith, hope and charity. The greatest of all is love. Okay. These are the three important doctrines which was given to the church. What happened? A little bit of false doctrine was added to the love, hope and faith. What is the love? Love your God with all the art. Supreme love was there. But what happened? A slowly false doctrine was added. Everybody goes to church on weekdays. You see? Saturday or Sunday, why? Taking the Bible very holy, they go, why? Not because they love God, because of fear. If we don't go to the church, what will happen? God will punish us, something bad will happen in our life. Nobody has love at all in God at all. Huh? Read huh? Isaiah 29. <clears throat> Isaiah 29, 13. Gopal brother, can you read? Isaiah 29, 13. Isaiah 29, 13, Wherefore the Lord said, for, for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, hmm. and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. See? This is what uh, the fear, Lord, not love. Where is the true, true love upon God? You see, no love at all. That love fadeth away. Then, second one is hope. What hope was there in the original church? That if he suffer for Christ now, tomorrow we are going to reign with him. But today, forget about reigning with Christ. Nobody knows that Christ will ever reign on this earth for a thousand years. And forget about suffering. Oh, we trust in the Lord. Every Sunday we receive blessings. All miracles should happen. No problem should be there in our life. Every comfort we should have. This is the hope today. Where is the sufferings for a Christian? Where is trials and testings in the life? This is totally gone. Read 2 Timothy 2.12. 2 Timothy 2.12. Anybody? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Mm, if we suffer with him, where is sufferings? No sufferings at all. Live and gone. Third one, faith. What is faith? Most holy faith. The faith on the Bible. Today, people are having more faith on the pastors and the preachers than on the Bible. What happened? The church got corrupted. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, the most holy faith, having faith on the word of God, Trusting God's word is very, very important. So, kindly go through the YouTube link. YouTube, uh, you see, subject, kindly listen. I'll be sending the notes also. If you have any questions, any doubts uh, regarding anything, you can definitely ask. Anybody has got any questions?